Hey, what's going on? Jake here with Uncommon EDC, and today we're checking out the Great Eastern Cutlery 68 pattern. And this is a pattern with a couple different configurations available, so each of those configurations is has a separate name. We have the Pony Jack, which has two blades coming out of a single bolster, hence the jack in the name. We have the Buckaroo, which I'm not super familiar with, so honestly don't know what differentiates that from the other two configurations. But last but not least, we have the White Owl, which is what we're looking at today. And the White Owl is different from the Pony Jack in that it has the same two blades, but coming out of opposite bolsters on the knife. And so that's what we're looking at today. Let's start with the tube, and of course we'll dive into the knife after that. But really, really great tube bar in this case. And these are something that I really enjoy displaying and so always enjoy when we get some excellent tube art, which this one has a really detailed image on it. We have the white owl flying directly at us over the tree line, moon in the background, really nice bold orange text with the white owl, and then you can see it's a Northfield unexcelled. So amongst my favorite tubes for sure in my collection. Flipping over to the cap, we have the cowhide jig bone covers and the model designation 68 of course could have indicated any of those three configurations in this case it is the white owl the main blade being a clip point we have two blades in this case and it was produced in 2021 so we'll get that tube out of the way and move on to the pin because this model did come with a pin as well. The art on this is a little bit different than the tube, which I always appreciate as well. And so pretty simple overall, you have an owl sitting on top of a branch and then some kind of fairy tale writing with the white owl. It's got the little loops at the end of the lettering, number 68 and then Howard at the bottom. Now when this first dropped, I think people assumed that the Howard was Bill Howard, the CEO of Great Eastern Cutlery, but it turns out that it actually is referencing a now out of business knife company, which I believe was called Howard Cutlery. Not sure what the significance of the owl is, to be honest. And so definitely want to do a little bit more research on that, that company, but thought it was an interesting tidbit at least. And so worth mentioning, not the last time we're going to see that actually. So Getting into the knife itself, kind of a mid-sized traditional, we're looking at 3.45 inches in that closed position, weighing in at just two ounces and relatively thin. So the significance of those blades coming out on opposite ends of the knife is that they're able to share a single spring, which I don't think is the case with the Pony Jack. Well, probably is not the case with the Pony Jack. And so you're able to get a slimmer profile, which I definitely appreciate. Now they are packed in there pretty tightly. And so one of the things with this model is you can get some blade rub and I don't have any naturally occurring blade rub, I guess, but I'm able to create it and I have created it and that happens when you put a little bit too much pressure on the blade when you're getting into that nail nick and opening it up. Some people will open the pen blade first and then the clip point so that they're not scratching on each other. I haven't been super intentional with it and so I have created some scratches just being, you know, not paying enough attention. And so that's something that you get with this model if that's a deal breaker, maybe worth going with the pony jack instead. But Honestly, it doesn't bother me that much. Also a little bit more prevalent in this Northfield unexcelled line than it would be if this were a TDU color with a satin finish. But cover wise, some of the best in my collection. I really, really love these covers. These are the cowhide jigged bone. And I don't know that I'd actually call them jigged. They're more grooved than anything, but no qualms with the jig name. But you have three grooves across either cover. So on the show side and pile side are both the identical. And the stain's a little bit darker on the pile side, but pretty well matched overall. Now I've seen much, much darker than even my pile side. And so there's a lot of variation that you can get with these covers. I think these ones look excellent. And especially the show side, I think has the color and with that extra texture of some of the darker browns that you see in there of almost like a cookie, a soft baked cookie. And then when you add in those grooves that look kind of like the fork press that you do on a peanut butter cookie, just kind of reminds me of a cookie. I don't know. But some of my favorite covers, they're just super clean and classy looking and a little bit understated. There's not like over the top in terms of color. Love that they fade to basically a natural white bone on either bolster and that's the case on both the show and the pile side. And so just love the way these covers are done. They look really good to me. May not be for everyone. Now, I also really like how the shield complements these covers. And so this is a simple shield overall. The bar shield is I believe the official name for it, although I've heard people call it a hot dog shield as well. 
I think the official name is the bar shield. And this does have some text on it. It says wide owl. And I think that looks good on this particular shield because the bar shield kind of looks like a plaque. And so it would be almost out of place if there were no text on it. And so don't mind the text in this case, although not always a fan of it. In this case, I think it looks really good. Now, the reason I said this complements these covers really well though, is you can see, at least on mine, the shield is sitting directly in that middle groove. And it's basically flush with the top of of those grooves. You can feel it when you get to kind of the sides because it is grooved. And that's something that's really hard to do on any type of cover that has an inconsistent texture. So there's peaks and valleys and raised areas and lower areas on these covers. And so it's hard to get everything completely flush. And they did a pretty good job of that for the most part. There's a single pin here, the middle pin that is a little bit proud of the top of this groove. And so that's a little bit higher. You can feel it when you run across it. It's not rough or anything, but you feel it. And so all of the rest though are seated really well in those covers and really well hidden. The transitions are really nicely done. And so just kind of a nice touch there in terms of overall placement of that shield. We do have a Northfield NXL line, so we have the mirror polish, which I prefer the satin a little bit, but do think it looks nice with these covers. And that also means we get the grooved and pinched bolsters, equal ended bolsters here, same on all sides, so kind of a cigar pattern going on. And the fit and finish on these is excellent. No significant gapping of any sort. In fact, no light leakage of any sort either. It does, if you look at the pile side cover, the bottom of it is for whatever reason, just a hair darker. And so it does make the appearance of a gap, but there is no gapping. You can't feel any space. You can't get your nail in there. And if you look closely, you can see that it's just how that bone is colored rather than any sort of gapping. And so I thought that was worth pointing out. Now, before we get this open, a couple of things. I already alluded to how tightly these are sitting in here. So you, you can create some blade rub if you're pressing on the nail nick or long pull and you put too much pressure, you can push the other blade onto each other. I don't have any sort of natural occurring blade rub, but I'm not that intentional when I open it. So I have scratched up the blade by pushing it into the other blade. I know some people are very careful about it. They'll open the pen blade before the clip point so that they don't rub together, but I'm really not that intentional about it. And so I have created some scratches because of that. If that bothers you, I think that's gonna be pretty prevalent with this model, the 68 white owl across the board. Maybe better off with the pony jack since they have kind of their own real estate in that configuration. And so may, if the blade rub bothers you, maybe worth looking at the pony jack. Now, other thing I wanted to mention before I got it opened is that both of these tangs are slightly exposed. You can see they're just barely, barely sticking up. And so they weren't quite able to get those fully tucked behind the bolsters. And so that is something your finger will catch on. Even though it's pretty minimal, it's pretty easy to catch your fingers on those and it's a sharp 90 degree angle. And so not gonna cause any sort of damage, but definitely gonna be something that's catching on your fingers. And last but not least before we're open is the long pull. So Northfield on XL tends to have long pulls and it does on its main blade. But if we flip over to that secondary blade, you can see we get the nail nick instead. And so that makes sense here because you don't have enough really blade exposed to gain any benefit from having a long pull there. So I do think that makes sense, but did want to point that as out as well. Now getting it open, it has a decent pull on both of these blades actually. I'd say medium to heavy, which is nice because they're sharing a spring and you tend to get lighter pulls when that's the case, but I'm pretty happy with the pull overall. Even if these weren't sharing a spring, I think they have a pretty good pull. No half stops on either blade though, so we're gonna go full open position here. And we do have the clip point blade as the main blade. That's about two and a half inches or two and a quarter inches of usable cutting edge. And it does have a mirror finish or mirror polish finish because it is that Northfield unexcelled line. And this one does have a blade etch. In fact, it has two. So I always have a hard time showing this. Hopefully it's picking up okay. But we do have that simple Northfield unexcelled etch on this side. And I like that a little bit better than the larger etch. It's not as Scotty looking, a little bit more kind of simple and refined. And so I do appreciate that. On the back side though, we'd get the same art that we saw on the pin with the owl sitting on a branch above the word Howard. And so so I would have been perfectly okay, actually, if this were on the main side of the blade and we didn't have the second etching at all, but neither of them bother me. They're not taking up a huge portion of the blade and I think both of them look pretty good. Tang stamp wise, we have the Northfield NXL, Tiddy, Pennsylvania. 
or no, I'm sorry, Titusville, Pennsylvania. And on the front side, on the back, we have that model designation. And you can see that scratch that I'm talking about. That is from me putting too much pressure when I'm opening it and pushing the main blade up against the pin blade. And so it can be avoided on mine. In some cases, it's gonna be rubbing all the time and not avoidable, but just something that happens. Now, ergonomically, this is really comfortable for this main blade. And we'll talk about the pen blade separately because I don't think it's as ergonomic, still pretty decent, but I feel like this is a really, really comfortable and usable blade here. Or like I said, a decent size at two and a half inches, two and a quarter of cutting edge, and feels good in the hand. You can get it right up there on there, have a full four finger grips, although it's a tight four finger grip. And so it does feel a little bit more cramped than maybe a larger knife might, but it still feels good in the hand. And one really, really important thing to note here, and that is on mine, the tip of this pen blade is not fully seated in the handle. And I don't think it's really gonna pick up because it's basically even with the handle. And so I'm not sure if that's the case on all of them. Some of them might be worse though. And so for mine, in the closed position, the clip point's really covering it, never gonna notice it. In the open position when I'm using it, never really feel it, never, no, action that I take or movement that I make really catches me on it. But if I'm intentionally rubbing my finger down the opening in the knife, I can catch my finger on there. And it's not enough to break the skin. In fact, I barely even feel it. And I can do it repeatedly with no markings on my finger. So it's not scratching or anything, but it is something where in theory, I could catch my finger on there and end up pulling this out, getting a nice little cut from that. And so that would be addressable if I were to grind this kick back just a hair, but I'm not gonna do that because it's not really affecting my grip on it. I don't feel like I'm gonna get cut on it. And the risk that you take when you grind that kick back, if you do that, is that you go too far and the snail nick ends up seated in the handle. And so I'd rather it just be continuing to stick out just a hair than risk losing access to that pen blade because you, I took it too far and it's seated too far in the handle. But something worth noting for sure and I don't know if other people's are more or less or if it's even really a problem and it's just a thing on mine, but did want to note that. Now, again, no half stops. We're gonna flip this around, get into that pen blade. This is a little bit smaller, but a decent sized pen blade overall at an inch and a half. Nothing going on in terms of etch or anything like that. And this one also has a pretty satisfying pull, especially for a smaller blade sharing a spring, like I said, with the clip point. Pretty happy with the pull on this. It's not heavy, but it's uh, on the heavier side of a medium pull, so pretty happy with that. But an inch and a half long pen blade, which is nice. You have no tang stamp on the show side, but if we flip over to the pile, you do have the GEC and the carbon underneath this. This is 1095 carbon. And with the ergonomics with this one, you don't have any risk of that blade coming out. That is seated nicely in the handle on the clip point. So. Feels pretty good. You also get a little bit of a ramp with this swedge here for those first two fingers and it sits in there nicely. Now, what I tend to notice on this one is that my pinky catches on the tang of that clip point blade quite a bit. And so that's something that's just constantly scratching up against there when I'm using the pen blade. And so not too big a deal because you're not gonna be heavy using the pen blade anyway, but something that's worth noting as far as ergonomics goes, that's kind of a big negative in the ergo section. But overall, I think this is a pretty good feeling knife. Uh, my only two bladed GEC so far, I'm sure that'll be changing soon, but only one so far and pretty happy with it. Now, I like the kind of slimmer profile of this. I will check out the Pony Jack if I do get the opportunity to grab one at a decent price. But that is one thing I wanted to talk about with this one is this is the only one I would say I probably didn't pay a decent price. I've been pretty frugal, or I guess just not frugal, maybe more careful is a better term for it. And while buying my GECs, I'm paying pretty close to retail. And in some cases I paid less than retail. And in the case that I paid more, it's, you know, $10, $15, maybe covering what they have in it for shipping and stuff like that. But I'm not really going into the super expensive GEC market. And there was an exception for this one. This is probably... I think close to $100 more than the next most expensive GEC in my collection. Of course, I did buy this on the secondary. It's an older model released in 2021. That's contributing to it for sure. You know, with the GEC drops, you usually get an initial hype for people who missed out on it and then flippers that are selling them for a higher price. And then 
after a few months it'll settle down a little bit the price will drop but after you know this one's been out for two years at this point over two years and so the prices are pretty settled on where they're going to be and this doesn't pop up that much but it's one that i knew i really wanted to get and so i was willing to pay a little bit more but ended up paying you know about a hundred dollars more than the next most expensive GEC in my collection. For me, that was worth it. I knew kind of what the general issues were and mostly with the blade rub, I didn't actually know about the potential of the pen blade sticking up, but with the blade rub, I knew about that potential issue and really, really just loved the look of this one and wanted this specific model. And so I overpaid for it a little bit, but it was really, I say overpaid just compared to my other GECs. It's really kind of what you can expect with this. They don't pop up that often, and so sometimes you're going to have to pay a little bit more. And if you're not willing to pay any, a bit more, maybe just decide that that's one that you're not going to add to your collection. But for me, I do think it was worth it because I just like the looks of this one so, so much. It, it's a decent user as well, but love the covers. Like I said, probably on my Mount Rushmore of covers in terms of traditional knives. And so that made it worth it for me, but still for the most part, trying to stay away from, you know, the overinflated prices because one of the reasons I got into traditionals is being able to check out so many different patterns at a reasonable price. And yes, GECs are expensive compared to traditionals, but I didn't, wouldn't consider the rest of the ones that I bought really expensive in relation to the rest of my collection, but this one is kind of on that upper end. And so something that I thought was worth noting with this particular pattern, but I would love to hear your thoughts on this knife in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, always appreciate it if you'd consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that notification button as they do help out the channel a ton. And I hope you have a great one. Take care.